it's very nice. It starts to pull a little bit. Now let's try and see what she does. Yeah, you can go through a set of tires pretty quick in this thing. <laughs> I love this thing. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car featuring today, 1972 AMC Javelin. You know, this is built by American Motors. You know, if you're probably 25 years old, you might not even be familiar with these, but they were impressive cars back in their day. Mark Donahue raced them. This one was done by a couple of my favorite brothers, the Ring Brothers. Now, you know, now that Ringling Brothers Circus is no more, the brothers can devote full time to building cars. So let's bring them in. Guys, come on in. <laughs> Gentlemen. Hi, Jay. How are you? Thanks, Thanks for having us. You guys us. always do we great work. It. Uh, this is a really unusual car. I was looking at it. I, I'm not that familiar with Javelins, but I said to myself, what did they do? Is it visual? Is the, is the wheelbase longer? Is it my eyes deceive me? What, what, what's different here? You know, these cars had a lot of overbite on the front right. from day one. You know, the, the, a lot of nose, but we wanted to get rid of a lot of that. You know, a lot of the newer cars push them wheels forward and right. really make it look better. So we actually moved the wheels forward six and a half inches. Okay, so it is moved forward, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was a whole different way of building a car for us. We actually scanned the front of the car and machined the fenders, machined the hood, machined the... So even though we've done a lot of machining before, we hadn't really done it in space before. Well, it's really refreshing to see. I mean, I like the Mustangs and the Camaros, and but it's nice to see something different, something unusual, because most people aren't familiar with AMC products. I mean, if you're my age, you are, because they, they were pretty cool back in the day. The AMX and the, sure. e even the Gremlin with the V8 yeah, was, yeah. was pretty quick. Pretty cool. And I remember Mark Donahue raced these and did quite well in yeah. Trans Am. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, American Motors was a player. They weren't as big as Chrysler and Ford and Chevy, obviously, but I mean, they yeah. worked it, you know? Yeah. When I grew up, I used to go to a local track in Wisconsin Dells, and the guys dominated with this car. So it was really cool for me as a young kid to clean it up on Saturdays and change oil and then go to the racetrack, and these cars dominate. I mean, yeah. Dick, Dick Trickle, Trickle to yeah. Tom Refner just dominated the track. So I really fell in love with these cars. But, yeah, most people think they're kind of ugly. Well, you know, it's not that they were ugly. They were just a little off. Yeah. You, know, they just, you know, that... Is, now, is that hump over the front fender, did that used to be higher in the original no, car? No, actually, they were just back six and a half okay. inches. Okay, it, it just had a weird kind yeah. of look to they it, did. you know? It's like they almost wanted to try to copy the Corvette a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. did have that real hourglass, you know, quarters. Yeah, because I remember seeing you guys at that car show. Remember, it was raining? Yeah. Where was that? And it was in, cool. in, in Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Dallas. Wisconsin, yeah, and that was... I love that car show. I wrote a piece about it for one of the magazines. It's just regular guys driving their car through pouring rain. I yeah. mean, the hardest rainstorm I've ever been in my life. And God bless them, guys show up and they're out there wiping the car. It's still raining yeah. and they're wiping the cars down. It was down. down the edge of snow though. It was the coldest. Oh, it was cold and guys are cooking brats. And, and, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, but I loved it. It was great. It was a lot of fun. Now tell me about the, it says Prestone on the front. That's the antifreeze company? Correct. You know, they uh, wanted us to build something that, you know, would represent the Prestone brand and, and that shows people it works in all different makes and models. And we had talked about it and thought, what a, what a better car than this one. Obviously, everybody knows that I think Ford had a hand in these and GM. These guys bought parts from just about every auto manufacturer right. to put these cars together. So that was kind of our pitch to, to Prestone to, you know, say we think this is the perfect car to, you know, make sure that everybody knows your product works in all brands. Well, it's it's made in Wisconsin, and you really can't get more American than American Motors. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean they were built in the heartland. I mean, you know, yeah. as yeah. I said, parts came from as far away as Indianapolis. Yeah. And, I mean, so they were, <laughs> exactly. you know, yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of, there's no Chinese stuff in here. No, no foreign, you know, it's all American but made. They it, were, they were pretty, you know, they were like at first, why a javelin? And I said, that's the reason why, because we kind of had to pitch it, and uh, our media company, Con, did a great job in showing like an overview of SEMA and like Mustang, Mustang, and they actually they pointed out every Mustang and every. Right. There was no AMX Javelins in the whole SEMA. That's so. what I mean. Like when I go to the Roadster show, I like 32 Fords, 
I don't like 1,500 of them, all yeah, of exactly. the Chevy small block and the automatic and the tilted away wheel. You know, I like it when people do something different. And this is really creative. I would, I would guess most people have no idea what this is when it goes down. They really Especially, don't. Um, they, they, what is it? Yeah, I mean, they don't know what it is. Does it say Javelin anywhere on the car anymore? No. It doesn't. Okay. No. Okay. But originally, the f they don't have flares on them either. Right. Uh, the crease actually goes right through the whole car on a stock one. So you can see how much lower this car is by us remaking the whole quarter panel, giving it a flare, kind of giving it a little bit more modern, but still holds a 70s uh, flare. And, and they had some power back in the day. I think, well, what did you have? We'll have the 390, right? 390, 390 and the 401. With, with the 401. Yeah, the 401, mm -hmm. yeah. right, with the four, four speed. speed. Yeah. Yeah. What motor's in this? Well, now it's got a Hellcat in it. Oh, it's Hellcat. Yeah, because we couldn't, we told Preston we'd try to make a thousand. A thousand and, horsepower? Yeah, so it was like, with the 401, we weren't. I mean, I'm sure you could have did it, but it wouldn't have been as reliable as, as right, this. Right, right, right. You know, this has got a four and a half liter Whipple supercharger on it. We right. took the Hellcat blower and, you know, got rid of it, but it, the thing runs like a champ. It, it yeah. makes a lot of power. It's it, got the eight speed? No, we actually didn't run a Chrysler Tranny. You we didn't run a Chevy. Uh, the engine builder and the tranny guy didn't think we could hold up, so we have a 4L80 in it. Okay. Plus, so using obviously using the Holley Dominator, I don't know that Holley at that time had anything that would run the Chrysler transmission. So since we were running the Holley Dominator to, to actually run the engine in this, it, it also runs the transmission in it. it it's so. so complicated nowadays, isn't it? it? Is. Because you, you, everything is hooked up electronically through a computer. It's tough. Yeah, so you can't mix and match the way you could in the old days. Yeah. No, and that's why it's nice to know a lot of different people in this industry that can yeah. help you mix and match. Can we open the hood? Let's take a sure. look. Sure. Let's do it. Now these hood pins are unusual. Tell me about I'm looking at going, okay, how do you how do you open these? Well actually the pins are out of it. We took the pins they're, out they're of it. They're inside. Oh you just took oh okay the pins are out yeah. of it now. Okay. So we exposed the radiator cap just to give Preston a little bit without well, this is one of the cleanest installations I've ever seen. I mean, it's, it's the same as your, if you'd pop the hood on your Hellcat, it would be the same, like the valve covers on that, when they turn this right. Whipple up, Wagner, their engine builder's like, keep these valve covers, they're amazing. Yeah. So we made covers, because we wanted to keep it kind of an older school motor with no throttle body sh exposed or anything. Right. And no fuel rails really well, it says exposed. Chrysler Firepower. That's like from 1953. It is. It I, is. That was one of the coolest looking valves. Yeah. That was so, a way we get, we had the opportunity to cover up the the new looking valve cover that um, th that your Hellcat has. You know, my it says Prestone here. My favorite thing is when I go to auto shows. There's that one guy that's an expert. And they walk by. Yeah, my my uncle had a Prestone. He <laughs> bought it new in '72. Yeah, you had the only one in town. Yeah. Have, yeah. People, have you run into people that do that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah, my friend had a Prestone. <laughs> yeah, it was really fast. I had the same car. <laughs> Mine was a little nicer, but I had yeah, the yeah, same yeah. one. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite. I, I love, I love the, the, oh, the experts. Yeah. You just go around. along with it too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you just, just roll along. Oh yeah, oh, press. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. Very oh. funny. Now what do we have? Is this, is this washer fluid? Actually, the other side is. Oh, this is the washer, washer fluid. fluid. That's actually the intercooler for oh, the okay. for the uh, blower. So right. we machined the whole front end, everything. The scan. That's why it's got a CUDA look front end on it, kind of because we did take it Chrysler Power and Chrysler did buy AMC, gave the car a little bit of a CUDA that's nose. That's right, Chrysler did buy AMC, that's of course. Of yeah, course. so that that's kind of why it came with the Chrysler Hellcat in it. <laughs> and this is like a Ring Brothers signature. It I is. love these pieces here. Yeah, that's these definitely ours. These are really cool. Are those done on, uh, these are computer generated? Yep. Yeah, they are. They're our design, they're all done in house. Oh, I always love, that. That, that's one of my favorite things you guys do. And this is nice. So this crease is original. Right. It what is, we did it's is moved it's moved forward six and a half inches okay. from where they were originally. So when we put the wheelbase together, we moved it six and a half, and then the flare came with it. The hood got a little big because of that supercharger. There. Right. But it actually needed it when we had the, like the original hood, and we kind of cut a hole in it to make sure we had a good measurement. Being the humps were so far forward, the hood looked really small. So it really proportionally, it kind of added to it. Sometimes you fall into things not intentionally. Yeah. Do you ever think of cutting the hood so the supercharger would stick through? Actually, we did, believe it or yeah. not. We, yeah. we, we thought that's Mad funny. Max for a little while, but then we just We thought it would be kind of cool, actually, to give it that yeah, old school know, feel. Know. Well, you know something, it looks more stock this way. It mm -hmm. looks like the, this is the way it would have come from the factory. 
But nice that's funny you said that because we did think, you know, that'd be kind of trick just to have the blower Let's sticking shut out. this again. Okay. So all the trim was machined? The whole Every piece on the front of this car was all machined in-house. All of these pieces, the Beautiful bumpers. Job. Yeah. Even uh, the lenses in the bumper for the turn signals, we rapid prototyped those. Did a lot of rapid prototyping on the car. Um, just to see if we'd like it first. Now this looks like the color of Prestone antifreeze. Is that is that? That was kind of the idea. Um, the, that green that they have. Yeah, yeah. but okay. it's actually that new M, M, three and four color BMW. Oh. Okay. And Jalopnik named it like the ugliest color of all time. So we call <laughs> it Jalop Gold. Is why <laughs> we funny. call it. Is that the Hellcat supercharger? No, it's no. one we machined. Oh, you made that one. Yeah. Okay. And then mirrors we made, and the door handles, and. The mirrors are very tasteful. I mean, they really match the car. Nicely done. Thanks. And really cr stayed with the theme of a lot of the original dash. We we thought these cars were cool in a way, the way the dash wrapped well, around. I like it when you guys keep the original. You know, when you came mm -hmm. with that 48 Cadillac and you had a modern ATS dashboard, I felt like uh, I, I didn't feel I was in the in a 40, about right. it, you know? And even the the switches up here on the dash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. those they were so cool. Why would we change it? Yeah, them? I mean, it's, it's, see, I, li I like it when there's some uh, homage to the original yeah. car, so you feel like, yeah. Obviously, the council we all built and used a new Cadillac shifter in it um, just because it worked well with the transmission. You don't have to figure out any more geometry. It works. Okay, let's see what's I've in. always liked the kick up on these cars, as a, even as a, you know, it's such yeah, a nice this is feature. Cool. It's cool. And I can't remember, did the original Javelin have this? The 71 and 72, but not three and four. Oh, okay. You know, we think that Pontiac might have stole some of that because these guys had this, looks like a T-top. It does look and like a T-top. And then in 76, yeah. you know, they, the Trans Ams and all of the T-top started coming out. It almost out, seems so. like the door would open from, right. you know, from yeah, here. Yeah, it could, yeah. And, okay, let's go to the rears. Big tires. All the way around. Good th heavens. Three fifteens up front yeah. and uh, 345 in the rear. So I have to tell you, obviously the car's got all Flowmaster exhaust on it, and we originally built it where the side e exit exhaust. Right. And it was so obnoxious yeah. that it just it just drove us crazy. So what we actually did is we actually changed the pipes around. So we call it track use and then everyday use. It comes out the back. Uh, oh, you got a switch? No, it's not switch. You have to mechanically change the. Oh, pipe. I see. Okay. But it was a good call for the car, especially you know the car is going on power tour. It's going to get driven a right. lot, and it's just going to be a lot more. Well, you know, I've got a uh, one of the early Vipers, which has the side pipe, and you only hear this bank, so it sounds like kind of it sounds like the car's out of whack. Yeah. You know, so uh, so. I see what you're saying. Maybe that's even the noise, and we didn't understand what we were, what we didn't like. You're about just it. hearing that bang. Didn't like yeah, about yeah. it. Can we open the trunk? Sure. sure. All right. So simple. A little bit more than a Harley travel trunk. But that's it's okay. Yep. Yeah. And this is like a signature. You guys always do this beautiful work here. This is uh, what a battery on-off switch. That's the master switch for the battery. Boy, nicely done. And yeah. this is obviously in case you want to jump in. Charge port without charge getting port, to yeah. the battery. Yep. Yeah. And this here, what's this? That's the inertia switch. That's uh, in all of our fuel injected cars. It's always a good idea to put an inertia switch in them. Obviously, if you have an accident, right, it'll it'll shut the fuel pump okay. off. So yeah, I remember Alfa Romeo had a a Mercury switch like that at some of their cars. And guys' cars kept stalling, but you'd throw it into a corner and the mercury cars would move and, and shut the thing off. So if you get this upside down and it cuts the fuel? We hope. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, then you ride it, but you know, come on, you go rolling down a hill, you want to keep the engine yeah. running. Okay. Well, just beautiful job, gentlemen. Very nice. Very nice. What other features do we have? Is this the original trunk lid? It, it is. is. Okay. Yeah. So all that is all stock, that stock, hasn't been shortened. No, nope, just okay. uh, the deck lid we scanned and um, to machined make the new the, spoiler for it. Right, and of course the original Javelin, as I remember, was a four-seater, correct? Correct. Okay, so this is just a two-seater, and that's what all stereo in there. Now? Stereo with the four-link, we uh, that eats into the um, the rear floor. Rear area. floor the, so. What does that pad do there? Is that just that's a subwoofer under there that we tried to hide? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. All right. Some things, yeah, just aesthetic. When I just drive, I like to hear the car. Um, 
I'm with you. Turn on AM radio. Oh, cop up ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Back. You know, I, I, yeah. Guys that go down the road blasting. It's a little. I yeah, I like the 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 exhaust is the stereo for me. You know, I, somebody came here with a thing that had some huge stereo. He said, "If we turn it up all the way, you can't even sit in the car." <laughs> I go, what, "What's the point of that?" Who, who turns the radio on from over there? I, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I'm deaf it. now. I can't have any more. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. Guys, i got to admit, this is one of the most exciting cars we've had here in a while. Really different, uh, truly unique, if, you, if that's such a phrase. Can we take it for a ride? That'd Let's be great. It. Let's do it. So this is not an individual. This belongs to Preston. It does. So now what is the exact horsepower on this car? 1,080. Yeah. Uh, we got it turned way back. I think the thing would probably make 1,400 if we right. wanted to. Right. Okay. The, obviously, a smaller blower pulley and some adjustments. Right. I don't think the Hellcat was meant to spin like that. Now, so. are we running pump gas or race fuel? Actually, just pump gas. All right, just yeah. pump gas. Okay. How do you think the car feels going down the road? Oh, it feels great going down the road. I mean, it, feel, it, feel, it feels like the Hellcat. This thing really likes to break the tires loose, so point it straight when you jump on it. Oh, I know, yeah. Doesn't feel like much right now. Well, it's so lin I mean, it's nice and linear. It's not not it, jerky. No, not jerky. No. What are you looking at here? Five-speed automatic, four-speed with overdrive. Four-speed automatic. Four-speed automatic. Yeah. Okay. So you don't think the Chrysler eight-speed could have taken this power? Well, it was the problem we had with the J was the fact of being able to run it off the computer without oh. using the Chrysler computer. Oh, I got you, I got you. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. It just made it a lot simpler. Yeah, it's yeah. Something yeah. that uh, the Dominator already works with. Right, right. I'm sure the technology will come in the day we'll be able to do that. Right, right. What am I hearing? Wah, wah. That's the blower. Wow. Boy, it's a strange noise, isn't it's, it? It really is. It's not. Is it not the pulley? It's it's the. It's actually just the whine of the blower. It's a four and a half liter Whipple blower. It's a big giant blower. And what was that? What would that be on normally? You know, I don't even think Whipple. This was like one of their first four and a half liter Whipples that they were actually making for this motor. Oh, okay. Uh, and we were one of the first ones to get one. So is this an aftermarket blower it is. now? Yes, okay. it is an aftermarket okay. blower on the on the Hellcat. Yeah, yeah. You know, you think about all of the time spent doing this, Jay, you know, with doing these cars, and it sure makes you appreciate what these auto manufacturers do and pull off. The I know. They, just the way they have no issues, they can build cars and drive right. 100,000 miles without any problems. And yeah. I think in the 70s, the hot rod guys could have probably stayed oh, with yeah, them because yeah. they didn't build such quality, but... Right. See, this to me is your perfect build. It looks like a Javelin. I feel like I'm in a Javelin when I'm in it. These gauges make me smile because it's what I remember from high school, you know? I remember you saying that about the Cadillac. Yeah, you know? yeah, and when you see 140, ooh, <laughs> that was like a huge deal when you are in high school. Especially when you were driving your mom's car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my mom had a Falcon and that went to 100, yeah. you know? I mean, I think like the second day I got my license, took my mom's Falcon out, 88, 89, and 90, trying to get it up to 191, 91, I never quite made it, you know. But everything does 100 now, you know. Without even blinking an eye. The car holds the road pretty nice. I mean, it's It does not, hold the road nice. Is it the chassis of the uh, Javelin? Actually, the, the front is all a stub out of a 69 Camaro, basically okay. forward. Uh, that's been reworked, and then the, the rear is a four link. Okay. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> you can't do that from a dead stop. I love that Hellcat motor. But if this had the A speed, it would have shifted three times. Oh, yeah. The bang, 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 yeah. you know, boom, then you're there, you know. You do this thing from any sort of dead stop, it's, yeah. it just shifts through them, it's a blast, but it'll burn them until the tires either fall off or you let out of the gas. Well, we'll give it a shot and see we how it to, goes. We have to give it a shot. Let's try and see what she does. You know, it tracks very nice. It starts to pull a little bit. Yeah, you can go through a set of tires pretty quick of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
I love this thing. You know, American Motors would still be in business if they, if they built this. Yeah. But you know, it feels just like a modern Hellcat. It drives very nicely. What is this way, about 36? You know, we didn't scale this car, but I'd be willing to bet this car is probably pushing 4,200 pounds. Oh, you think it's that heavy, huh? It's pretty heavy. Well, there's no door guard or any of that stuff yeah. in it. God, that's fun. Goes good. Even though the suspension is fairly primitive compared to, you know, the newest stuff, it's very nice. It's good. It's very predictable. When you get on the throttle, it doesn't pull sideways and throw you sideways. Even though the tires are spinning, they're spinning in a straight line. So it's impressive. Well, this is most like a car of all the ones. I mean, you can drive it every day. We're not rubbing, you know, we're not scraping, we're not breaking the splitter. You've got all kinds of horsepower. And it drives and handles nice. And Chrysler is selling these crate engines now, aren't they? They are. I mean, that's pretty good. It's nice to have that technology, you know, available. Well, I gotta say, I think this is one of my favorite Ring Brothers builds because it's just such an unusual car. It's different. It still looks like a Javelin. You know, you've got the Javelin dashboard. It's still recognizable as what it was. It's just a better version of it. And that's my favorite thing. You know, sometimes cars are so overdone, I can't tell what they used to be. But, you know, you, you drop in this Chrysler crate motor, it's bulletproof. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's really a lot of fun to drive. I want to thank the guys for bringing this by. Yeah, I, I just love this car. Nobody knows what it is. Everywhere we went, we got thumbs up. Hey, what is that? Was that Javelin? I remember those, you know, blah. Plus, it's it's kind of nostalgic, you know. When I was in, a kid in high school, American Motors was a going concern, you know. <laughs> and it's a piece of Wisconsin. They built it right near your house, right? They did, yeah. a couple hours. So yeah. Cool. Well, you guys, Mike and Jim, the Ring Brothers, thanks, guys. Terrific. Thanks so much, Jay, for Terrific. Us. And uh, we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>